Greg LeBlanc. I'm here at the Haas School with Mike Olson, who is the co-founder and current chief strategy officer at Cloudera. Welcome, Mike. Thanks, Greg. It's great to be here. So, Mike, you said that in the 70s and 80s, uh, people generally underestimated the size of the relational database market. Uh, do you think that people are currently making the same mistake about the, the big data market? I think there's a lot of excitement now about what big data might mean, uh, and the space has a certain momentum. I do think that we tend to overestimate short-term growth and dramatically underestimate long-term growth. The opportunity in big data isn't to go do the stuff we used to do on traditional business data uh, at much larger scale. It's to invent new applications and to design new data frameworks that allow us to attack business problems we never could before, to be a lot more real time and predictive. And if we do that, if we can generate value from data in that way, then the profits are gonna follow. If people are making money doing those kinds of analyses, they're absolutely gonna invest in the infrastructure. And that's gonna create a really rich market for a whole bunch of innovators to come in, build new systems, deliver new services, uh, invent new algorithms to do this kind of stuff. So I am super bullish in the long term. So to follow up on that, um, it's not just sort of incremental changes in the way people ask questions and the way the algorithms work and the way the data is stored, but rather there's, there's been a fundamental discontinuity in how data is stored and managed uh, that makes big data possible. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, well, look, I think there are absolutely instances where companies are teetering right on the brink of being able to continue to use their existing systems. Um, if you're doing ETL on one day's worth of transactions and it takes you 23 hours to do that, you'd better not do any more business, right? You can't grow at all because you're constrained by your IT infrastructure. So in that case, you might well just go do an old thing in a new way if you can do it dramatically faster. So there's some incrementalism. But, but, but I do think that the big opportunity is to be able to ingest enormous amounts of new data from sensors, from automated trading systems, from the automobiles and factory floors, the devices that are basically reporting status all the time now, and to build analyses that let us do predictive maintenance on those shop floor robots, that let us do uh, market intervention and better quantification of risk, better detection of fraudulent activity, in those transaction flows. Those applications are gonna be net new and they're gonna be driven in part by the volume of data, but also by the availability of algorithms that can handle them. Now you've also talked about the cognification of the world, meaning that sensors are gonna be everywhere, actuators are gonna be everywhere. Um, but doesn't this also mean that the cloud computing is not the complete solution and that we're gonna need some kind of distributed um, decision-making throughout all of these different locations? Yeah, you know, I think we will see the compute infrastructure change in the years to come. But if you take a minute, stop and think about what the world looks like in 2006, Amazon had only rolled out its S3 and EC2 services at the time. There was really very little that was done with them. And there certainly wasn't the rich collection of additional services for streaming and analysis and so on that Amazon and others have been built on that, have built on that platform since. Uh, lots of vendors are delivering infrastructure and applications as a service these days, that'll continue to happen. It's not just sensors and actuators in the environment that are gonna make a difference though. We're gonna see CPUs and storage and networking distributed among all of those devices. We're gonna have dinky little objects that are able to interact with us in reasonable and intelligent small ways. They're gonna be able to talk to one another and they'll surround us absolutely. Computation is gonna be pushed out to all the way to the edge uh, and, and that will be different from the world we see today. There are examples right now. Think about uh, smart cars, about a Tesla or a GM or a Ford. These are cars that have plenty of computation in them, that are continually collecting data, that are even noticing user behavior noticing what's going on in the environment around and making autonomous decisions, right? Automatically braking when they think a car might be slowing down in front of them. That's pretty remarkable. Uh, and we're gonna see that kind of capability proliferate. So I wonder if you could say a few words about the um, way IT departments are changing within these large enterprises. You know, 
most large enterprises have traditionally treated IT, first of all, as a cost center, right? It's a place where you sink money, not where you measure returns. Um, and also as a service organization, right? It's a place where you go make demands and those folks jump and do what they are asked to do by the business users. What we see happening in our customer base right now is that IT is becoming a really essential part of the business. That is to say, information technology is critical to the correct operation of the business. And that means it's no longer just a service, it's gotta be very close to the business users, to the requirements, to the key business drivers. IT is way better at delivering the compute, the storage, the infrastructure, the applications that the business needs if the folks that are running the machines know what the goals are. So most of our customers now bring in their technical leadership in order to understand the business problems that they're attacking with big data. Thanks for coming in, Mike. Good.